Welcome everyone. I'm Sherry Elam with the Bee Supply Monthly Magazine and I have Yappy the Bee Man with me today. How's it going, Yappy? Yeah, I am great. I uh I I feel like I have finally reached a level in you know this beekeeping production sharing stuff that I I just never dreamed I could make, you know, to that. I mean, you have interviewed the the most important people in the world. You know, at least in, that I know of, the Dirt Rooster, you know, Mr. Ed, um, you probably ended up, you probably got Barry in there a time or two, you know. But uh, uh, Wow. Wow. See, you got, you've, you've had greatness. You were, you were, you were, you were, what's the word, digressing in your quality. Oh, um, certainly not. Well, I tell you what, but uh <laughs> I don't know. I, maybe I'll live up to the standard, and I and I, I, I hope. Think, I think you quite will. Yeah, I think you will. Um, just super cool to have you here. I, I, and you know, don't don't undercut yourself. You are you are worthy, sir, of um, the hundred ninety eight thousand followers on YouTube. Let's just leave it at that, right there. But you know, somebody there might be one person out there that doesn't know who you are. So let's um, let's just introduce who you are and and uh, why you are where you are. Okay, am I supposed to tell you that now? Yes, that's me. that's the question. I look at you. Me. I look, look, what, what's funny is is everybody that's watching this is actually looking at you somewhat blushing right now. That's kind of uh, funny. Yep. I, oh, it's no. my, it's the way that way I have it. Oh, that's that Texas <laughs> that Texas suntan. Um, um, well, I appreciate you having me on. Um, in the beekeeping circles of the world, I'm known as Yappy Bee Man. Um, at home, I'm I go by a bunch of other names, and I if you approach me, I wouldn't autograph anything in those names, so we'll just stick it at Yappy. But uh, I've been uh, I primarily I'm known for my bee removal videos, and it's funny that you brought up Fred Dunn because Fred calls them ripouts, and. Uh, and although Fred and I are very acquainted with each other, I actually don't have a Fred Dunn. If you actually see this, Fred, um, hey, call me. All right. If you don't have my phone number, just, you know, you can get, you can find it. You're a smart man. But we got to talk about this terminology on ripouts. It's not a ripout. I mean, that's that scares people. So let's not call them ripouts. But um, like I said, I primarily have been a bee remover for a little over 10 years. I I got into beekeeping with the desire to interact with something nature. Uh, I, I do explain that uh, quite often. We, uh, My wife and I just got to a point a few years after the whole September 11th debacle and worried about food sources and this and that, you know, to a maybe a thought process of prepping that um, if there came a time when we couldn't just run to the pharmacy or to a doctor, what type of things could we take care of at the home level and uh, be able to identify and treat? And so we took a um, we took a class with a local person that uh, has been had learned from an old man back in the mountains for years that was taught by an Indian woman you know so this is this little tradition in the use of the uh the old-timey medicines and and we uh my wife was the one that she I mean she's darn near a herbal doctor as far as the knowledge goes I didn't really take into that you know trying to figure out to identify this plant that root that weed that leaf and then all of a sudden we come to a day where we had the the conversation about the medicinal properties of, you know, and uses with products from the, from a beehive. And uh, I went, hang on a minute now, this is something that I can interact with. I can, you know, I can, I can hold these things. I, I mean, <laughs> if, if, any, yeah, if anybody knows me, it's like, I'm not, I'm not really afraid of anything. I've interacted with everything from, um, and this is no, no lie. And it was a, it was a juvenile, but everything from skunks, snakes, raccoons, possums, I have actually interacted with sloths. They are cool. Um, I'll tell you a little side note about sloths here in a minute, but, um, uh, you know, elephants and giraffes, the zoo, the zoo just hasn't really kind of, you know, taken a liking to me yet to let me come and ride on a giraffe, but I'm, I, I foresee it in the future. Um, I, uh, 
my bucket, one of my bucket list things is to swim with dolphins, but I'm talking about the dolphins in the ocean, not just, you know, spending a bunch of money down at sea world and getting to do that. Right. But if, if <laughs> right. it comes, if it comes down to the point where I have to, I'm still going to do it. Um, but that, that interaction in nature is what just really triggers me. So that day came and I said, I'm jumping all over this. Um, I, I, I want to keep bees now. And, uh, i found somebody that had a feral beehive in the back of a barn wall and was allowed to go and get it. I uh, found a few local beekeepers that had knowledge of how to do it. And we got a plan together. I got a box, you know, donated from a couple of people and I was ready to go. I had a box. Okay. Had some frames. I was ready to go. So the, the morning comes, we show up there, they start tearing open, ripping open. Um, <laughs> That must be where Fred Dunn gets it from, that's because it. if he had ever seen them and the way they acted, yeah, that's probably it. But it was it was interesting. But at the end of the day, I watched this whole process happen, and I've made no secret to the two gentlemen and thanked them a thousand times over for all the help they gave me. But after I saw what was going on and how it, the approach went to it, I said, there's got to be a better way than this. And so I started really kind of looking into a few things, but then I, I learned the beekeeping side of it, you know, for the first year hobbyist, I, I, I did things that just kind of were very anthropomorphic The you know, I, I called them my girls. They were my babies. You know, if it's cold, they're cold, bring them in, you know, kind of thing. Um, and I went through learning and then the next year a friend calls and he says, Hey, I got bees in my house. Can you come get them? And I felt like I had learned and studied enough through, some avenues um to try it and i head up to his house and went through and i did my first removal and it was probably one of the biggest ones i've ever done and uh but we we got it we succeeded and when it was over with i said i, I was on my path um i had a very very good friend of mine that's a commercial beekeeper um years later later we were talking and he said you know there's there's one thing that I can tell you that's true about beekeeping. You can do everything good. You can make queens. You can make splits. You could sell. You can make honey. There's You can do everything good. But there's always going to be that one thing that you do great. Mm -hmm. And he was on a removal with me when he said that. He said, and at the, at the end of the removal, he said, I could never do what you just did. Wow. He said, that is insane. And, and how I processed it, how we relocated them, how, you know, once we were done, we carried it, we put the bees in them back in the box and they just went on. And, um, uh, I was, I was very, um, I was very humbled by that, that, you know, I was a short time into it, a door opened up, m multiple doors opened up. And then I ran across and made friends with, uh, JP, the bee man out of new Orleans. And he, and I, we started talking, we got to be pretty, you know, pretty tight. And I had an opportunity to meet him at a gathering, um, uh, the following year after we had really developed that relationship, he invited me to come to new Orleans to help him get caught up on his schedule. But the offer was, you know, you come down here, he said, and, you know, I'll give you a place to stay. I'll feed you. Um, you know, but I'm going to teach you everything that I know. He said, you're going to go to the front of the class just because I will teach you every secret that I know. And it, you know, but now it, it, it was because, because I live so far away from him, I think, you know, so I'm not running to New Orleans to get any bee removals. Right. <laughs> and I respect that. I very much respect that. Um, but he did. And over the course of about three years, I, you know, three, four times a year, I was down there hanging out with him mm -hmm. and, he would make videos that got me in there. And then in that process, Yappy Bee Man was born. Um, the name came from Big Bud at one of the gatherings. We called the Bud Gatherings. And he would call me Yap Yap. And uh, I just couldn't do Yap Yap, you know. But um, it, we're like probably eight, nine, 12 minutes into me telling you this story. So you can understand <laughs> where the name comes, you know. And uh, But he called me Yap Yap. And... He didn't give me permission, but he really didn't say that I couldn't come back if I changed my name to Yappy, but he would never call. Everybody else called me Yappy, but he would always still call me Yap Yap. And, uh, uh huh. Um, but Yappy was born and I started, uh, you know, I'm 
uh, with JP's help, I started a little YouTube channel and got a camera, a tripod, and I was just video. I try to edit. And if I go back and I look at uh, one of my first original videos was doing a four stabs gone from a bee tree. Mm -hmm. And um, I can't say that anything I have ever done has been invented by me, but it, I've made a few things more to the popular known side of it in this era. Okay. And with the help of, with the help of some honey be gone and a couple of drill bits and, and a thought process that made sense to me, mm -hmm. I created the, the forced abscond of how to get bees out of something. I never recommend you do it in the house, but I know people try it. I disagree with it, but mm -hmm. Some people, you know, they, they're doing it and if they're successful, more power to you. But I think there, there's parameters behind that. But, um, you know, camera on a tripod, 30 minute video. And that was that was my lead out to become Yappy Bee Man. And it's just grown ever since. I've been very, very fortunate that, that you know, the community over the years has accepted my growth and my product that I put out as far as videos and my sense of humor that goes along with it. And uh, it just kind of goes from there. Well, um, I could listen to that. That that just keep going, actually. And the reason why is is because it, you're genuine. You know, people watch your videos and you're genuine. And I truly, you touched on something a second ago about um, you talk to the bees and you talk to them um, almost in a, uh, you give them reverence you you just um you respect them and they yeah. it's almost like they are going oh okay i'll be good because he's being good to us and it's really like that i, I mean that's an outsider looking in but your videos are very soothing and calming um it, it's just it's really it's i'm gonna call you the bee whisperer it really fits well, does yeah, that make have, sense? Yeah, and and I'll say here's here's kind of just how that developed in me years ago. Because I mean, I've been I've been interacting with nature and animals and things of the wild since I was a kid. There's a story that uh, my dad will bring up every once in a while. We had I found a duck when I was probably I was probably 12 years old, and I found an injured duck. And I don't know what was wrong with it. You know, I still, I couldn't tell you, even if I could remember, I, I don't know what was wrong with it. But I brought this duck home and my dad was in the process of redoing one of the bathrooms in the house. And they were going to put the big giant cast iron that they just had re, um, re powder coated and everything. And it was sitting in this little area of the house and, I decided I had to, I had to have some place to put this duck overnight. You know, I'm going to take care of my duck. So I brought the duck inside and I put it in that bathtub and I put a blanket over top of it. And, and I, you know, I didn't think it was that big of a deal. Well, my dad would get up early in the morning to go to work. He'd get up about three o'clock in the morning. He'd go in there and, you know, turn the light on and hit the coffee pot, you know, go take a shower. And here he comes you know, doing his normal routine. He flips a light on, he goes over and he hits the coffee pot. And as he turns around, there's a duck head sticking out of that blanket <laughs> and a bathtub looking at him and just goes, Rang! and <laughs> freaks my dad out. Three o'clock in the morning, my dad comes walking to my room, goes, where'd it come from? And I said, well, I, uh, you know, and he just, he just looks at me and he shakes his head. He's like, I, I, uh, it closes the door and walks out. But that was, that was just, you know, the things that I did. And, but, but years later he laughs at it because he, he tells the story about how, you know, flips the light on in, in a coffee pot and he turns around and he just notices this movement and there's a duck. I mean, how did, so <laughs> through the year, um, it, it's some point, probably and she bought a palomino horse and i'd, I'd never rode horses before well, i had rode a little bit but didn't know anything about it. I'm, I'm not a cowboy and mm -hmm. i learned with the riding horses from a very well-seasoned older gentleman that we'd go on trail rides 
I would pick up on how people do things, you know, and if it made sense to me, I would, I would try to um, not imitate it in a disrespectful way. But I mean, if it's working for them, then I'm, I guess it's got to work for me. And he, when he wrote, he would just every once in a while go, Hey baby, you know, you know, okay. pat it on the neck. Hey, good girl. You know, you know, go easy, blah, blah, blah. You know, he would talk to his horse mm -hmm. and it may or not, you know, I don't know if it made a difference, but I know when I got on my horses, that I I would develop that connection mm -hmm. through a communication. The horse doesn't know what I'm saying. I could have said, "Give me some apple pie and you know a large coke from McDonald's," <laughs> but it was it was that tone and that right. in the way I did and um um you know to try to calm and soothe. So yeah, you know when I get out there, it 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 has a lot to do with keeping me you know develop keeping me calm um relaxed around something that early on you know um here's a here's a really funny story so i told you how i got my first beehive okay mm -hmm. well we got these things set up got them on a stand and i'm probably a week into having bees and you know i've got my little bee suit and i got the smoker and everything and i walk in the house and i hand i, I tell my wife i hand her my bee suit and i said hey put this on she looks at me because now, I mean, this is a girl that runs from snakes and spiders and everything. And she calls me in to come kill spiders, but you know, cause she's just a, a girl. And she, so I said, here, put this bee suit on. She looks at me. She's like, uh, for what? And I said, because I need somebody to call nine one one in case I die. <laughs> and she starts, she's looking at me like, what are you, what are you talking about? I said, I said, and I had been sponging JP, the B man's videos. And this guy just sits there in his big Cajun Santa Claus beard, you know, and mm -hmm. cutting bee comb and put, redoing it and everything. And I said, um, if he can do that, I can do that. I'm walking out here and I said, I'm, I'm going to learn how to work with these bees without a bee suit on. Mm -hmm. And I'm either going to die and you're going to have to call 911 or I'm going to make this happen, but I'm going to figure out how to make it happen. And you people don't realize that when you have skin in the game mm. you treat things a whole lot different I can see you that. can you can have a bee suit on you can have the gloves on you can have seven layers of britches on okay some rubber waterproof boots where they can't get through them mm -hmm. all right and you could look like the the marshmallow man or woman you know out there in your bee yard but you you don't because you're so coverage you can't literally feel something that that bee that's underneath your finger that you're holding down and now alerting a pheromone and now all of a sudden now cheeses off the rest of them and you become the problem mm -hmm. so i had i had skin in the game and i said you know let's uh you know take that frame out and and i had never even and i'm, I'm sorry i do probably about what 90 percent of other beekeepers how they start i never took a class I, I researched and I looked into whenever I had a question, I would find an answer, but I just jumped into it. Mm -hmm. And um, lucky for me, you know, I pulled that first frame out and I'm looking at the bees and I'm just, I even developed a breathing process when I was, when mm -hmm. I was in them, not to exhale heavily onto them. Mm -hmm. That'll cheese them off. Yeah, and I set my frame, I set my frame down and I make room to where I can slide and raise the next one. You know, when I went through this whole box, when I got done and I put everything back together and I put that last frame in and I put the lid back on, I look at my wife and I go, oh. didn't take the first sting. And I was like, okay, I'm still alive. We're doing good. Walked off. And man, I'm telling you, it, it was pretty close to about, I've, I've skydived before. Um, and, you know, jumped out of an airplane at 14,000 feet. And that that's surreal in itself. There's, you you have no idea how peaceful and quiet it is at about 10, well, however many thousands of feet they pull the parachute, how quiet it is, you know, and it's just exhilarating. But this was pretty darn close to it to walk away that first time with no suit on and no, no sirens in the background taking me to the hospital. But it was, <laughs> but that's, that's just where, that's where my story began. And then the doors opened up with the JP thing. And then the YouTube thing came. And then I would start to just, you know, try to make a production, a little video that I would put together 
a little something. And then a few years after that came my, uh, my introduction with the dirt rooster. Um, mm-hmm. I get a, I got a phone call from him one day because I had, you know, I'd finally made it on a radar and, uh, I'd called him and I said, or he called me, he said, Hey, aren't you up in uh, North Alabama? Yes, I am. He said, how far from Huntsville? Oh, about an hour. He said, I'm going to be in town next weekend. He said, you want to get together and make some, do some B stuff? Sure. And I'm going, you know, this guy's got big time thousands of subscribers. And I'm going, mm-hmm. what, what the crap does this guy want to deal with me for? <laughs> you know, whatever. But, um, the more we talked, the more we just, you know, interacted with each other, it became really cool to have made that, that friendship that mm-hmm. has developed into, um, uh, a very tight bond. I mean, you take bees out of this and, and he and I will be, he and I will be friends, you know, until one of us has to bury the other one. Isn't that awesome? Um, yeah. And, uh, well, he's the, that good a guy. He's that guy. Oh person. God. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he's my alter ego. Um, and I, I think that if he ever sees this, he's going to laugh at it because I'm, 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 I'm like a kid with ADD. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm a few years older. I'm coffee cup age, you know, but, um, I mean, no, I'm, I'll bounce off the wall. If you, had, I mean, <clears throat> if you didn't pick it up when we were at Navi, every once in a while, somebody yell out Marco, you know, and because I'm, I'm that guy, <laughs> you know, just to see how many people are going to say polo right oh. back to me. Yeah. Well, but, I didn't uh, know your alter ego you were talking about is to be six, four and, um, you know, able to reach up without a ladder type guy. Cause no, no, no. He's, he's my, he is my complete opposite. I mean, he is so chill. Yeah. Um, he's yeah. got, a, the thing about it is he's got a hell of a damn personality and sense of humor. The only thing is, is that it's, it's like, you don't expect that from him. And when he throws it at you, it, it surprises people. You know, he almost, he'll tell you, he's like, man, there's sometimes that I'll say something. He said, and I'm, I'm laughing at my own joke. He said, but, I, but people just, he said, I feel embarrassed because people don't get it. I'm going, no, I get it because they don't see that in you. They're, they're seeing, you know, they're rooster, blah, 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 <laughs> you know, you know, oh my God, I'm in fear. But, uh, you know, and, <laughs> oh, yeah. And then when he cracks a joke, but, oh, he is gold, absolutely gold. I but agree. he come along and then, um, he kind of, he kind of sprung me up into the, my next level of production. Um, gave me a, a lot of look into this, think about that, um, different things. And it, it built and grew. And, um, I was at a point where I really, honestly, I said, you know, I'm about tired of YouTube. Um, I had just about had enough. We were coming right into the beginning of season and there's, you know, there's processes that you got to understand. If you don't put stuff out for a while, the, the algorithm kind of forgets you. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, you got to jumpstart the algorithm again. Mm -hmm. Well, um, it was like a, a Tuesday. My wife calls said I had one of my hives swarmed. It was hanging in a little, little pine tree sprig across the street from my house. And, um, I got home and I walked over to it and, as I'm looking at it, the queen comes running right across the top of the ball. And I mean, I just reached down and bam, I grab her and I'm going, holy crap. I mean, I've got nothing with me. I didn't take anything over there. I just wanted to walk over and look at it. So I walk back to my truck, holding the queen, put her in a cage, walk back over and I'm going, Hey, this is a great algorithm starter. Grab my phone, start recording, you know, check it out guys. We've got us a swarm, blah, blah, blah. But you ain't going to believe this. I literally have already caught the queen and I'm, I'm going, I mean, she was literally just walking across this ball. I had to go back to the truck to go get a, to go get a cage, blah, blah, you know, that's kind of how the video went. Yeah. Well, I just straight up load it, titled it what I titled it. And it was like two days later, I got 10,000 views on it. And I'm going, what the, what the heck? <laughs> but there's two things that that set up. It set up the finding a queen and catching her before mm-hmm. I shipped the swarm. Mm-hmm. I'd never done that. And I mean, this has been in like seven years of, of catching swarms and doing videos never have had that happen. I'm not saying it's impossible. It's just very rare. Right. Well now about four days later, get a phone call, gigantic swarm hanging on a cedar tree. I pull up in the driveway and I mean, it's just hanging there. There's 10 pounds of bees hanging there. And I'm like, Holy crap, pull the truck up underneath it, throw a tarp on top of that, set a box up there. And you know, now I got my queen cage ready. All right, got everything. But you know what I don't have? I don't have a camera. I I, I video everything, you know, with with uh, handheld cameras and whatnot. All I got is my phone. So 
I'm like, well, it'll be what it'll be. So here I am and I'm holding my phone and I'm, you know, I'm recording this thing and I, and I do, you know, the weird stuff I interact and I reach up in there and I grab a little handful of bees and I'm going, oh yeah, they're great. You know, and I shake them down onto the entrance. And it, so I look back up, there's that little cubby hole where I just pulled those bees out and right there's the queen. And I go, oh, wow. And I reach up and I grab her. I mean, and I grabbed it, caught her perfect. In, in 10 pounds of bees, there's the queen sitting oh, right yeah. there. And now I'm holding her in my hand and I'm like doing this. I'm going, right, guys, I got to put you down for a second. And I'm still talking and I grabbed the cage and I put her in the cage and I picked the phone back up and I'm going, this doesn't happen. Holy, I, and there's, I mean, holy crap, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, so I set her down in the entrance and I'm going, what do we do from here? Well, let's just shake the bees. Let's watch the march. The coolest thing I think in the world with swarm catching is shaking them and watching them march right into the beehive. So um, it's like they're mesmerized. They're and they are right. They're mesmerized well, to go back to the queen. Yeah, this freaks people out. Okay, the fact that I take ten pounds of bees and I take a tree limb and I go. <laughs> You know, and it sounds like glass breaking or shattering and all that noise. And man, I got bees falling off the side of the truck. There's a cloud of bees everywhere. And I get more people that have make comments. I had and and if if she sees this, I'm not gonna mention her name, but I got a comment yesterday on that very video. And somebody says, well, I would have cut the branch and just gently, you know, and, and let them, let them, let them go in the hive. And there's probably a, a, a swarm that size probably has multiple queens, but uh, it was a very entertaining video. And Yappy's, Yappy's a humble guy, but I can, you catch me at the wrong time. And I, oh, and I just kind of, I don't get spot, ugly. Did you? Oh, I did. I'm <laughs> sorry. And I, and I'm, I'm, and if you watch this sister, I'm sorry, you are, but um, so I kind of, I kind of went back and I said, you know, that's the joy of beekeepers that, you know, it's their way in air quotes their way is always better. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, but I did go through that colony. There was only the one queen, um, because just because you watch a video, you don't know the parameters behind it. You got to be real careful. There's time frames where we have reproductive swarms in their qu classification of, and they're going to be huge, very early spring. Right. And you also know that why that why that happens and why that you can have those large size swarms. And although there is a possibility, yes, you could have multiple queens in that, being that you know most of them being unmated, and possibility if weather holds up a queen from you know the the first half from swarming, you can have that original mated queen in there with a bunch of unmateds. Okay, but I also pay attention every day to what my weather is it hadn't rained in two weeks mm -hmm. if that colony was going to swarm or it had swarmed or if there was multiples in there it wasn't because the weather held her up right. but anyway but it you know i still remember this day because it's been my biggest accomplishment and i'm going you know i did go back through it i checked for you know any more queens and the reason that i don't just dump them in the top of the box is because i can watch those bees walk in and mm -hmm. if you don't think i'm going to see an unmated queen walk in to a, a, a colony as I put them on a giant tarp let's review where I ended up pulling a little ball of bees out and I literally caught a queen by hand to start this video right. sheer dumb luck so anybody that's watching this video going okay yeah you pat yourself on the back well I'm not <laughs> but I am and well, I, I would be but too. I, Let me but I am because that was pretty incredible really. but, but but yeah you know has anybody else ever did it I guarantee you somebody else has but unless you caught it on video, it didn't, say, happen. It didn't happen. <laughs> didn't happen. It didn't I happen. I did. <laughs> so anyway, um, but but she commented back, "Oh, I didn't mean that. I'm sorry." And I was just as sweet as apple butter. And I said, "No, no, I, you know." And I was nice, and we talked, and you know, I I did a little looking back towards some of her information through the socials, and you know, she's been a beekeeper about ten years. Yeah. And and but it, it gets there's sometimes where it just it it, it kind of hits you the wrong way when you people don't know the time frame that guys like mr ed um fred dunn came in uh dirt rooster jp or myself put into to this production of i right. mean and, and that's just a few guys i mean there's a lot of youtube people out there and 
you could tell the difference between somebody that, you know, hit record and is walking around their yard and doing something versus somebody that's got a quality production. And I can, I can do a bee removal in, you know, four, six, eight hours. And I am, I'm trying to remove a hive in somebody's house, record it, um, maintain the scenario to where nobody gets hurt. Then I've got to pack all that up, go home, put the bees in a box, um, you know, finally get done with that, go in and take a shower. Then I've got to offload all that footage into a storage, com you know, on the computer. And then at some, that's, that's just, I'm doing two things at once. I'm a production man and I'm a bee remover. Mm -hmm. And then from there, um, I, you know, I, the removal side is done. Now I sit in front of the computer and now I'm, now I'm a production company, a one man right. production company. I'm the, you know, I'm the, 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 the talent, the producer, the director, the editor, uh, the promoter, you know, mm -hmm. all those things. And we can, there's times where we sit down in front of computers and depending on the length, I could be there for four to six hours. I could be there for, um, two weeks. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I put out a video, um, that, and it, it was amazing. It was a huge hive up underneath a, a lady's porch and, when I opened it up, I, you know, it was like, this is insane, but you know, let's find a queen out of 10 pounds of bees here. You know, there's a gazillion of them. Mm -hmm. So, uh, ended up as I was removing it, we started finding queen cells, you know, and there's a whole story in that. Um, but you know, one after another, well, the first one I found, I set it down on my, on my back box for some, you know, a minute. I went up to go get a queen cage out of the truck or a clip or something to put her in. And I come back down and she had already come out of that cell. Oh, wow. And I'm like, where'd she go? And now I'm looking, I mean, cause you, you know, queens, when they, the, right when they hatch, they are not much bigger than a dang regular worker. Very skinny. I'm underneath, a, I'm underneath the backside of this house on a slope that's covered in Ivy. Okay. I mean, needle in a haystack and i'm looking for this one single queen and i'm going oh crap so well we'll figure it out later so i vacuum and i pull a piece of comb next thing you know i mean i get six i think we found five or six more for sure queen cells out of that so i decide if she's coming out that our time frame's there is i'm looking at those cells you know they've got you they're 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 pretty close to it so I start popping queen cells, you know, and I'm, I'm recording all this, um, trying to get everything that I can, cause this is an amazing removal. And, uh, by the time that I finally got around to editing, that was back around August or September last year. I just had it sitting in, in reserve. Didn't think anything about it. It took me two weeks to edit that video. Oh, that's like 19 minutes long or pretty close to that, but it took me two weeks to edit that video. And then I get in there and, and, and that's why I say with all the love, I want feedback. I know every creator wants that feedback. Um, but then I get somebody that comes in and goes, uh, seven Queens. Yeah, really. Um, you need to learn beekeeping and didn't even watch the video. Ah, didn't, well. didn't even watch the video. And, um, hmm. it, so you, it, it kind of, it kind of can get a little frustrating, but, um, just know that we do it out of our passion and love for it. We just, all we ask for is a little bit of love back, you know? Well, you know, you've got plenty that do. So, there's, you know, you talk about the needle in the haystack. That is the, the person that's got, feels the need to criticize is the needle in the haystack. Yeah. Do you, um, just take this one step further. Do you, do you take these back to your bee yard to become production hives? What, what are these because, you know, we don't know. We, we see the beautiful footage, but then what happens when we're not watching? Well, here's the thing that I don't think that you did your homework on. Oh. Um, now, listen to y'all. Before we started this video, she happened to raise that little notebook that she's got. She told, turned around and told me she does her homework on us. Okay, uh -oh. before did she I miss something? Us. Yes, you've missed major something. Okay. so Or maybe is, I know and I was baiting you. Uh, I'm probably going to give you that one just in case there's your parachute. Okay. There's your parachute. So with all the years that I've been doing the production stuff, I, you, growth comes from feedback. 
-hmm. And in that feedback, um, I found a lot of people were asking, you know, where did that high, what did you do with this? How did, you know, what did it turn out? And so I started adding in to the end of the videos where when I got back to the bee yard, you know, I showed the basic setup and we we're, you know, putting the bees in whatever particular box, maybe speak about that a little bit and um, just kind of letting people know that they got back to the yard, everything looked good because there's a lot of people that um, there's a lot of people that don't realize what we do and and that we're actually relocating bees um side note from that i've got a really great friend that does wasp and hornet removals mm -hmm. and he's up near pennsylvania somewhere up in that area and uh, he goes by the hornet king and all his videos are i show up i cut a hole in a wall which um you know he cuts pretty good but there's sometimes where you know fred dunn may have gotten that rip out from him <laughs> Very, very possible. Um, yellow jackets will chew. They, they're very destructive inside of a wall. So you can literally walk up and touch drywall and it just put your hand through it. So it, it you can rip some of that out and, wow. and get away with it, but not in beekeeping, not in bee removals. But now what the Hornet King does is he, he literally is showing you that he is sucking these with a vacuum, a shop vac mm -hmm. into a bucket um, that has some, you know, a little bit of water down in there. So when they get in there, you know, in, in his process, he goes back and he dumps all that out and his chickens and his emus eat it. You know, it's everything works out great, mm -hmm. but he has a very large following. And in that following, people are watching all these videos that he's, you know, sucking something out of a wall and then he feeds it to, you know, the chickens. And they don't, they don't comprehend that what he's doing and his processes and the thing that he's getting out is completely different from mine. So when they see me vacuuming bees, they think, oh, you can't, I wish I, I, I would be rich. I could buy a new truck to haul this camper if I had a nickel for everybody that said, why are you killing the bees? And my comment is, why didn't you watch the entire video? Because at the end of these videos, I'm putting, you know, you, the bees are going into a beehive. But that that production value of trying to um, show people what they're asking for has has been added into the videos, and to help answer that very thing, what do you do with the bees once you get them home? A lot of the majority of them come back to my yard. Um, I have my different management practices as far as. Uh, how I feel about what I'm going to do with them. There are times where, like right now, we're in the middle of a great flow. You know, uh, weather's holding them up, but we're we're in honey making process right now. Mm -hmm. So if I get you know a nice three, four, five pound box of bee, uh, uh, colony of bees out of grandma's ceiling, they're coming back in. I I don't reuse comb the majority of the time. Um, older comb that's been there for you know process for years. If I'm in a window of flow. As soon as I get them back in, they go on brand new Premier frames. They get sugar water. They get some pollen to get them through for the first day or two while they reorientate. And I let them build if there's any issues. You know, I can always take them, combine them with other hives. There's, you know, management processes. If, I, if I'm if i not in a position where I want to add another colony to my yard, because with my removal schedule, I stay bad busy with that plus my every third day job plus dad plus husband plus mm -hmm. you know wow. my i cut my own grass you know because i'm not that rich um so i have a schedule on us so i have limitations on how many i keep right. but if they if i don't bring them back here they will go to i have a uh, retired marine colonel friend that um loves beekeeping and a lot of them will go to him um, some will go to 4-h students so that every every colony that that I remove gets rehomed somewhere, and um, but that that I love very that. I yeah love that. okay yeah that's why I baited you for that. You really we got to know as beekeepers, and the longer we're in this, we really kind of have that unspoken. Um, we need to give that back because you have a talent, and we need to give that back. We don't need any more bees. Um, I can't tell you how many we've given away. It's it's just part of it. We should. And I commend you for it. Well, that that direction in the production side, I I love interacting with beekeepers. I love talking about bees. Um, I will tell you, you know, I this is what I do. This is how I do it. I'm not 
I don't want to get out there and try to teach you how to make a split. I think there's plenty of great YouTube videos out there about how to make a split or and what type of split. Uh, you know, whether we're just cutting a box in half and putting it down right next to it, walk away and have a good day, or I'm going to shake a whole bunch of bees off and then these come back in, but these go into the new box. There's a thousand ways to split. Sure. I want to give people an opportunity to fo um, follow where the how these beehives progress and I have I started a, a second YouTube channel that I literally put together. We we planned on doing this a year ago, and we finally just said, you know what, let's let it run, and it gives me an opportunity to get in where I can do live streams. Um, when you get to a certain level in production, you realize people come to your channel looking for a certain product, yeah. a certain a certain norm, and if you if you deviate from that norm it turns them off and you will lose uh, interest and it kind of goes from there. So as much as I would love to add to my, um, to my Yappy Bee Man channel, my crocheting hobby. All right. And also my um, uh, hula dancing that I love to do. I think it would probably run know? people off. Uh, no, no, it's actually, that's just funny. Ha ha. Okay. But anyway, but I, so you know, Yappy Bee Man is 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 the brand, but but that channel gives you this. Mm -hmm. But to interact with, I want to interact with literal beekeepers, where I get a lot more than beekeepers on that channel mm -hmm. that are looking for something, but they have no desire to be beekeepers. Over here with the Honey Money TV channel, I can I can get on if I feel like it. I just want to go. I just want to get on live. I just want to talk to people about bees. You know, I no direction at all. I just want to interact with you guys. I can just I can turn live on and say, hey, all right, here I am. If 12 Stop. people show up or if 200 people show up, it's, you know, let's hang out like it's it's almost my little personal corner of the knobby where you know, tonight, if you're available and you want to, you know, chat, let's go. And and it, it will grow. But it also I will have videos that will follow some of the removals you can follow these bees because these are people that want to know and see what happened from there and watch that growth there's a lot of different things but it's the interaction that i can have with people um freely that it is what it is um that that is great for that so i love that i you know and and we are we are a breed of our own beekeepers do like talking to, and especially as we get a, a year or two We'll leave it at that. Oh, yeah. yeah. Us. We would love to interact and people ask questions. And I will never forget when someone asked me something um, and I knew the answer. And I thought, hmm, you know, this was a dozen years ago and I really didn't even have to think about it. And I thought, oh, I knew the answer. I didn't have to Google it anymore. Of yeah. course, we were Googling it then, but it was, it was interesting, you know, to be able to progress to that. And you got the platform to be able to just say, okay. Here we go. Let's have a forum. Let's talk. Yeah. Please. Yeah. I love that. Um, one of the, um, you know, do you know uh, Bruce Jenny from Stream Team? I don't know him personally, but I know who but he you know is. Of, I've seen him at, at the yeah, now, conferences, yes. So all three of them are great, but Bruce is the one that I have the history with. And uh, Bruce called me about a week ago. He said, hey, man, he said, I want to. You know, how would you like to, how would you like to get on? Because he knows I've started the new channel up. He's like, Hey, how would you like to come on and do a do a live with me? Let's just sit and shoot the breeze, you know, like what we're doing right here. And I'm you mean you're gonna give me an opportunity to talk? <laughs> let me polish up my <laughs> let me polish up my <laughs> microphone, brother. Like, yeah. So we ended up we got on the other night and, and him and I have interacted, we've known each other oh god, probably ten years. And um I have followed the, his progress and, you know, he'll tell you stories about, you know, our first interaction between me and him. And, and then I've followed his growth, but he's just somebody that is amazingly humble. You can, I can tell in his knowledge of things. Um, I told him he, we, he and I were talking after their stream last night and it was like, we're talking just like me and you, you know, and I said, why didn't we, why are we not recording this? Because it's just, it's like the only thing we're missing is the campfire. And to me, that's oh. what these live streams are going to do yeah. is it's, you know, there's no smoke in your face and, you know, nobody's worried about having to go out behind a tree to go TT. But mm -hmm. at the end of the day, it's like, 
you know, this is just us hanging out and, um, and I, and I hope to see that growth on there. I really do. Well, we do that with the monthly webinar that we do. I don't know if you know of it or have seen it, but it's, it's called monthly buzz and we, um, Blake Shook gets on there and James and my husband and I, we, we pop in. It's just, it's awesome to be able to have a forum for beekeepers that no, well, let's just get real free that, you know, they can go in and turn on at any time recorded version or live, step in live and, and be able to see experience talking. It's, yeah. it's a blast. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I think it's amazing that this is a direction that a lot of people are going in. I mean, it's an avenue and we're all trying to find our niche in it, mm -hmm. but um, you know, where 10 years ago, anything that you really wanted to learn about beekeeping, you really had to go find a book. For sure. Uh, that was, uh, I'd say that what, 12 years ago window um, was when we the social media stuff was coming up we had you know myspace uh, as far as that goes for a now, minute <laughs> yeah so you know what's funny is is some of these some of the younger beekeepers in here are going to go what was myspace you know um well it was the it was the uh, original version which was actually kind of cool in some of the things that you could do with it but it was pre facebook and now um we're so we're at the point now where um, you know, Facebook is as old, you know, and forgotten, but it still interacts with but what a lot of people didn't realize was that the only way you could really get online B information was to go to a certain dot com mm -hmm. and then go through their chat threads. You know, mm -hmm. you had to almost know what your topic was. Mm -hmm. And um, there was a there's a, there was an original one called B masters dot com. Mm -hmm. And I don't even know if that's I don't even know if it's still a thing, to be mm -hmm. honest with you which is kind of how I got hooked up with JP and Bud and all them when I got started. But that was the original, how you found information, how you interacted. Facebook came along and then made groups to where you could have a group top, you know, you could go to a group that was about something. And then the, all these beekeeping groups started coming up and, um, you know, it, it helped to really build that growth and, and a resource for knowledge. And it's, crazy amazing that i know some of the smartest beekeepers the most experienced in the world and you know they they laugh you know um they laugh at how much information gets spread around because people just want to throw an answer out there mm. and uh so here's a curveball if you ever want to give an answer you better know the right amount of inf information you give to get before you give an answer um, I can put, I can just put a picture on the front of a beehive. There's a lot of bees hanging out on it and you'll get 10 answers. And that, and, and that whole little joke about, you know, ask 10 beekeepers one question and you get 15 answers or however it goes, ask one question, get 10 answers, um, is because none of them decided to ask mm -hmm. questions. Mm -hmm. You got to ask questions to give the right answer. Don't send you. If if you want to help a beekeeper and you have experience and you have knowledge, um, get the whole picture before you can give the right answer. And you'd be surprised that, um, we'll, perfect example, you got three pounds of bees hanging off the front of a beehive and it's now May. Okay. Well, location is going to be a major big thing as far as what's going on there. But one thing that can be really interesting is what's the first thing everybody says? Oh, dear God, you got to make a split. You better split that hive. They're about to swarm on you. And when at the end of the day, it is a warm day, it's kind of humid. But no, they're not about to split. What's actually happening is, is you're in between a flow. Mm -hmm. And, you know, they're just, you, you take that hive and you split it now. And you just cut your, you know, you're cutting your honey production now because now half of them's got to go over there and, and, and do, um, you know, draw frames and do everything else. You've got uh, a window of, well, it, do you actually, are you in a window of having good drones? Did you mm -hmm. just kill, did you just kill half your bees, you know, because they can't get a queen mated, blah, blah, blah. There's so many different factors, but you got to ask the right questions. You do. And 
um, that's probably with the the amount of groups and the in invention of that ability to gain information. It also gave a platform for people to give so much misinformation. Oh, so true. You know, just because I just want to involve in the conversation is about the bees on the front of the box. Yeah, um, that probably was my first panic attack with no, nah, probably it was an orientation flight, but second, well, I'll say second panic attack was bees hanging out on the front of the box, right? Yeah. We're in East Texas. It's a sauna out there at what? Two thirds of the year. It's yeah. hot and humid and the bees are smarter than the average bear. And they're out there hanging out fanning, right? I was freaking out thinking the bees were leaving, but I was new and didn't realize that I got to take each component, put them together before I could assess what was really going on. But yeah. how many calls have I gotten over the years? Are my bees? And of course, just like you said, you're going to answer as a professional, you're going to answer for what you're asked. So if somebody just calls and uses their words, they're going to say, I've got all these bees hanging out. They're bearding that magic word, right? Bearding. Well, where are they bearding? What's the time of day? Where all these questions, just like you said, and then they end up coming up with their own answer, which I just love. I feed off oh, that. Yeah. It's so hard to do that. Do you do that? Do you kind of bait people into coming up with the the right answer? Just about every time, it's because awesome, because what what have they learned? If if I turn around and say, okay, you know, I, you live right down the street from me, so I already know all the parameters. OK, mm -hmm. and then I just turn around and go, you know, they're just bearding. I mean, it's it's 85 degrees out and it rained for the last three days. Right. You know, they're just bearding. Don't worry about it. That doesn't teach them anything. Mm -hmm. I tell the the one answer. And I'm going to say that, you know, I we started out. I told you I've not invented anything new, but there is one thing that I'm coined a phrase. And, um, you know, I humorously say, and I have this phrase trademark, so you can't put it on a T-shirt. Uh -oh. But in in ninety percent, probably higher than that, there's one single statement that I can make that it don't matter. It don't matter how many people answer, I can say this one thing, and it and it turns around and it changes everything. They can say, I got this, show me pictures. People say, do this, do this, do this. And I'll say, the answer's in your box. <sighs> that, now think about that. The answer is in the box. Yes. What is, what, until you get in that box and you look for this, this, do this, or find that, or don't find this, or don't find that, the answer is in the box. Mm -hmm. So I can take my car to the shop just because it's making a rattle noise. All right. And I can I can overanalyze the stew out of this, but until the mechanic who actually gets under the hood or looks under the car actually searches for the problem, mm -hmm. the hype the answers are all hypothetical. Right. Until we can't you see answer that question for them, can we? No. We can't say somebody says, Do I need to feed right now? I get that a lot. Mm -hmm. I I don't know. Yeah. Ask your bees. Well, how about this one? Early spring. Now, see, I'm, I'm in a different window than you. Okay. Yeah. But I mean, I, I actually, I get three and a half seasons. I get winter's cold, but I don't generally get winter snow. Okay. But now somebody, somebody will turn around and, and we've had, we have mild winters mm -hmm. and they'll, they'll have a, the first day that it hits 70 degrees out. They go in their colonies and they're looking through and they're, they, they don't see any brood. And they're, oh, my God, I don't have a queen. I got to order a queen. Oh, my God. And all I want to do is, you know, just I ask them, you know, a few questions. And but it's like, well, how much pollen do you have in there? Do you have any pollen? You know, we've got they've got honey. They, they're they bringing nectar. But what? But OK, but do you have any pollen? Oh, uh, 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 <laughs> you know, yeah, it's like. There, you can't raise bees without having the resources to feed them. Mm -hmm. So you're just not there yet. You know, just give it two weeks. Mm -hmm. Because at the end of the day, 90% chance you're not getting a queen anyway. Mm -hmm. All right. But but just no. put the lid back on it. Leave it alone for a little while. Go back in it and see where it's at. And then, you know, and then they've got like test taking anxiety like I've got right now because <laughs> that two weeks, you know, that and they're back in. But then 
the majority of the time, all of a sudden it's like, well, you know, we got trees budding, the weather's been good. They go back in there two weeks later and they got frames of brood and they're going, oh my God, you know, um, there's, there's so much great information that we're, we're people just, Hey, slow down. Yeah. Just slow Look down. Inside. Look inside. Yeah. Our mentor said, um, and we've told this many times and I'm sure he's seen us talk about him, but we loved him, love him still. He's still with us dearly because he'd say, we'd ask a question and it was about, you know, something probably stupid. Um, and he'd say, please don't write books and just have that, you know, just basically, I'm not going to answer you. You're going to have to go in and find the thing yeah. yourself. And we dug and, and years later, James said, you know, bees do write books. The book is in the hive. It's the pages of the book or the frames. You just have to read the book because every hive has yeah. their own story. So really, that's the answer to every beekeeping question we get. It's just leave it, yeah. Leave it to a dang beekeeper to because I've used the same thing. You know, I've never read a book that bees have written. <laughs> yeah. Bees will bees will tell you things. I mean, I I I analyze things on a whole different level. Yeah. You know, um, and you know, y'all people that are listening to this, you can't until you can't use this in any of your chats until after I die. This is my this is I don't have much that I can teach people, so <laughs> But, so but if you look at a beehive, like you look at an aquarium full of fish, mm. I mean, now you're lacking, you're lacking the water. Okay. But yeah. a, an aquarium, a, an aquarium is its own little ecosystem. It's own everything. Everything happens within the confines of that glass. Mm -hmm. All right. Now think about that as a beehive. Everything happens within the confines of that box. Mm -hmm. All right. The, it's, it's, an entire little world, an, an entire system in a box. Mm -hmm. And one thing that we don't really give enough credit to or respect to is their communication processes. Oh, for sure. And the one thing about their communication processes is everything has a pheromone. Jamie Ellis said one time in one of his speeches that every bee has got a pheromone that relates to its job duty. Sure. So, there's there's balances that you know it's we know we've got a balance of workers a balance of foragers a balance of this a balance of that and we've got that one thing that's floating around in there that keeps everybody calm and that's the pheromone of the queen and it and it transfers through their processes of getting a little pheromone on this my body and i run around saying hey she's still okay guys everything's good you know but everybody's happy and when I, I try to explain to people that the way you approach and you enter that colony is going to be a major factor on whether or not they like they let you in or not. Mm -hmm. You have asked to enter their world and you've cracked it open. And then the first thing that we do is we destroy that complete process. So now picture in, in the anthropomorphic state of ideas. I come, I come in there and I kick your door in and I walk in the front door and I'm hollering, Hey, Jerry, yeah. you know, what's, you know, the first thing you do is you get on the defensive, of course. but if I, but if I crack that door open and I open it a little bit and I say, Jerry, where are you at? You know, mm -hmm. hello, because you're, you know, but, but it, you're less alarmed. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, if I, if I, if I do it nicely, but then I throw a skunk in there, <laughs> you know, you mean you might not be friends. So every everything you do, the 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 cracking of the lid, the taking off of the lid. Um, a lot of people crack it, puff puff, put the lid down for a second, puff puff at the entrance way. All right, I let them know I'm here. Well, my puff puff versus yours may be two totally different amounts. Right. You know, I'm a very light you know, uh, smoke applier. Yeah. But then when you pull that lid off, you have literally sucked out every, every yeah. single pheromone out of that colony. Right. So do it slowly mm -hmm. and, and then see how your bees react. I've, I've met people and I, I spoke about this at, uh, uh, winding Creek where, you know, 
how we pull our frames out, how we interact on those. You know, there was one gentleman that came up. I made the comment that um, a gentleman got me on a Zoom call one day, and he's like, watch this. I, I don't understand why these bees are so mean. They, I mean there's, they weren't like this last week. And he pulls up, rips a frame up there. He says, see, full of honey, pushes it right back down in, goes to the next one, pulls it out. You know, and he's just getting eat up. And I said, just put it all back together, put the lid on. I'll see you tomorrow. And then I walked through the process with him. I, I literally talked to that guy just two days ago. He called me about something. And uh, I told him, I said, you know, I tell that story about our Zoom call all the time. And he just shakes. He said, yeah. He said, I'm, I was so embarrassed. I said, no, but because I use that example, people actually learn from it. So it's yeah. still pretty cool. But um, so true, um, but there was a guy that walked up to me at Julie's place and, and said, you know, he said, you nailed me, man, to a cross. He said that I never thought about that, yeah. you know. It's, it's everything and how you handle a beehive is 97% female. Treat them like ladies. That's right. Okay. Because what, yes. as a lady, if I, if I get a little too grabby, a little too handsy or a little too pushy, what's going to happen? I'm going to come at you. Exactly. <laughs> not going to be a good thing. <laughs> not, not at all. Well, so. I, do, I do agree with that, that you, your approach and, this, and um, I used to say, find your inner zen, you know, whatever it is that you've got to do, don't go out there and start hollering and banging and the bees are going to respond to your, your actions and how you feel. And even if you're nervous, you know, even if you're intimidated and we do wear our suits, but you know where we are. Yes. And our, our, girls, our girls grew up on the other side of the tracks. And they, they're different. I mean, most of the time we have to <laughs> requeen. We requeen every year without fail and sometimes more if we yeah. have to. So, but your bees are sweeter. Hey, you know what? I just looked down and we're going to have to get off this call. Um. I could talk to y'all day, man. I now you understand why I had to start a second channel. Yeah, I do. It's my outlet. It's you know, if nobody shows up and all I do is sit and talk to myself for an hour on a video, you know, it'll be what it'll be. Holler at me because I will sit there. I'll talk. I'll show, I'll be one. I'll be one of your three that show up. Heck yeah. Okay. I would. I'd love to have you in there. It's been. This has been a ball. I. Um. Well, you're. You're a ton of fun to talk with, and I think our screen froze. Doggone, there it goes. Now it started. Right here. Okay. The there, there we go. Now it's going again. Thanks for coming on my show. It was a pleasure. All right. Well, we'll talk soon, okay? Even if it's live, we'll, we'll talk soon, okay? I'm Thanks. looking forward to it. Thanks, Shabby. Thank you. See y'all. All right. Bye.